coming up on today's episode of the AMA Drone Report. DRL SIM tryouts continue. The AMA maintains Washington efforts and Matternet unveils a new drone station. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report, a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world. In partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 200,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. I'm Sophie Herlock. DRL SIM tryouts are continuing this week through March 26th. Winners from each of the weekly online tournaments will go head-to-head -head on April 2nd for the ultimate prize, a contract to join the 2020 DRL Alliance World Championship season as the official DRL SIM pilot. You can register to participate by downloading the DRL SIM and entering tryouts. After that, complete three heats on the 2020 tryouts track and you're automatically qualified to join the weekly online tournaments, held every Tuesday and Thursday. Each week is a different track and you'll have 30 minutes to set your fastest time in a qualifying race using the DRL Racer 4. During this massive weekly online series, DRL will be giving away $75,000 in total prizes. The top 24 will battle it out bracket style to become the overall winner and advance to the finals. Now let's take a quick look at news making rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. It's time for today's Drone Minute. There are some places only a drone should go, and close proximity to an active volcano is one of them. Some spectacular drone footage of the top of Guatemala's Vulcan de Fuego has been posted to Twitter by Matthew Watson, not only showing the pinnacle of the volcano, but significant activity that almost took the drone out of action. Part of the Sierra Madre de Chiapas mountain range, this active stratovolcano is proving to be an amazing place to study such phenomena. Rwanda is underway with a campaign against malaria that will use drones to eradicate mosquito larvae long before they can mature and create real problems. The drone spraying program was launched by the Ministry of Health and is set to be piloted by local drone company Charis UAS. The program will target 12 of the targeted 15 districts, especially in the eastern and southern provinces, where malaria prevalence remains of greatest concern. A well-executed FPV flight can be a thing of beauty. And when you have the cooperation of the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force to show off your skills, it can also be a thing of history. Last week, the Drone Racing League posted the at NERC FPV FPV flight footage to Instagram, showing off their flying amid some of the most historic aircraft in the U.S. Air Force inventory. The global drone services market is poised to experience spend growth of more than $11 billion between 2018 and 2023 at a compound annual growth rate of over 50%. An exponentially rising demand for rotary wing drones for support search and rescue operations is acting as a primary factor driving this double digit spend growth in the global drone services market. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. The AMA's government affairs team spent last week in Washington, D.C., visiting congressional offices and attending meetings regarding remote ID and altitude restrictions. Overall, the congressional offices were receptive to the AMA's concerns, and a number of offices will be sending inquiries to address those concerns with the FAA. They met with the aviation subcommittees and congressional members that represent AMA chartered clubs and controlled airspace that will be going through the FAA safety risk management panels for flights over 400 feet. In addition, AMA is continuing collaboration with Google, EAA, AOPA, and AUVSI officials to find common ground and discuss sensible solutions to remote ID. They are still early in this process and meeting will continue for months, even years regarding the proposed rule on remote ID. Matternet unveiled their new Matternet drone station. 
The station integrates with Maddernet's autonomous M2 drone and cloud platform, providing an intuitive user interface for sending and receiving medical payloads and a safe and secure drone portal for hospital campuses. The station gives flight directors sitting in a remote Maddernet enabled mission control center the ability to monitor operations, including inspecting vehicles and checking airspace before takeoff. Each station comes with its own automated aerial deconfliction system that manages drone traffic over the station. The Maddernet station occupies a small footprint and can be installed at ground or rooftop locations. At around 10 feet tall, it keeps the vehicles high enough off the ground not to compromise safety if installed in a public area. The station guides the Maddernet M2 drone to a precision landing on the station's platform, locks the drone in place and automatically swaps its battery and payload. And that wraps up this week's drone report. Don't forget to click subscribe and to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. For more information on the exciting hobby drone world, head over to modelaircraft.org. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.